All right, let's go in and see what kind of comments I haven't responded to yet. Yogesh says, organization chart you show doesn't support PDF or PowerPoint export. Yeah, unfortunately, that one does not. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see. Pat, hi, Nathan. This video is great. When do you plan on making the second video about the PDF tool? Wait, that video is like two years old. Oh. It was at this moment he knew. Okay, I screwed up. What can I say? I said I was going to make a video two years later. Still haven't. So here is finally part two of using the PDF tool. So let's jump on over to the example. Now, I don't have the PDF anymore that was uh, based on that particular tool, which is actually a good thing. That really wasn't a good example of PDF. What I've got on my screen now is an invoice, a pretty typical invoice. It's a sample. It's one that I created in Word and then exported uh, to PDF. The section of this invoice that I'm really interested in is the table down here that's got the quantities, description, unit price, and dollar amount. And my goal here is to take this invoice, turn it into discrete fields that I can then upload into an accounting system as an example. So that's my, that's my uh, PDF there. I'm going to start off where I left part one, which is the tool is installed. Uh, we installed the R package that you need, which is called PDF tools, and um, we're ready to go. If you're not there, go ahead and watch that video and then pop back over. So I've got the data loaded in. One thing you'll notice in the difficult part, whenever you start parsing PDFs, is that the data came in all in one column and uh, it's real raw. I need to be able to parse it out. So one of the common things you'll see people do is use the text to column tool and then maybe in using that tool identify a delimiter like a tab and I can use a forward slash T to pull tabs in and uh, and run it. Unfortunately this PDF does not have any tabs that separate the field so all I get back at the end of this is basically the same data field again. Now there's some trickery I could do to make the text to column tool work, but a better tool is the regex tool using reg regular expressions. So I'm going to parse out that data column and we're going to create some regular, a regular expression here, actually two of them. Now I am by no means a regex expert, not at all. I'm simply showing you this tool as an option, something that you can put into your repertoire and pull in. So what I'm going to do is, uh, is start by getting the spaces because I know there's a lot of spaces between the text that I need. Uh, and so slash s gives me space and then in curly braces I'm going to put the number two which means that I want to look for at least two spaces. All right and then once I've got that pulled in uh, there's just one other tiny little thing that I need to do and that's slash b forward slash and then b and what that does for me is it tells uh, the tool that when you encounter the next word uh, that's where I want to stop. Now, there's a much more elegant way to do this. This is just a simple introduction to regex, and I've posted references to some learning material for you so you can go and dive into regex. It gets pretty deep. All right, so once I've encountered that, I'm going to replace that uh, section with a pipe symbol. All right, so let's go ahead and run run this workflow, and I'm replacing it with a pipe because eventually that's what I want to use as my delimiter. All right, so looking at the data, uh, I can see that the pipes are in there, but one thing it didn't catch was where the dollar signs show up for the actual dollar amounts. So to do that, I'm going to pull in one more regex tool. And again, there's probably a better way to do this. Uh, I am going to put in square brackets a dollar sign, and that means that I want the tool to, to specifically look for a dollar sign. Now, the dollar sign symbol means something else in the regex world when it's not in square brackets, but I want to look specifically for that and then put a pipe symbol there. Okay, now let's go ahead and run our workflow again and we should see a pipe symbol where those dollar signs exist. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, and it looks good. Uh, it's been replaced and now I can go ahead and continue uh, processing. So now I can actually use the text to columns tool and we're going to replace the comma delimiter with a pipe and we're going to bump this up to six columns. All right, and run it again. And we should see now everything parsed out into separate columns for me in the section that I want. And if I scroll over, 
you'll notice that uh, the the uh, first column here contains the item description unit price and uh, and everything is parsed out correctly now I just need to hone in on that one section uh, of the worksheet now I'm going to do a couple other things and one of them is to pull in a select tool and what I want to do is get rid of the data and, and file component I don't need that in there anymore uh, I don't I don't need these now the file may be important if it contains a date of the invoice or some determined characteristic that you need like the vendor that sent it to you if it's not already in the invoice itself then use the file you can parse that out okay so I've got that piece in there uh, now I'm gonna do a little bit of a cheat here uh, I'm gonna hard code where I need to go and get the the row that I want now normally we would search for it and filter it out but I'm just gonna use the select records tool it happens to be uh, the 14th row so we'll say 14 and plus and uh, and that's the rows that we want within the PDF. So that's going to give us the table and everything below it, which is also the subtotal, total, and discounts. Okay, so now what I need to do is go in and get rid of uh, the fields that I don't want, plus I need to clean up some of the trailing spaces here. So we're going to use the data cleansing tool, we used that before, and uh, we're going to say that we want to remove all leading and trailing white spaces that's selected by default. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and begin filtering out the rows that we don't want. Uh, so anything that is in uh, row one uh, that is empty, uh, we don't want in this data set. All right, so we want uh, is not empty to come through. That's what we really want in here. And we're going to add all browses just so we can make sure we're doing this correctly once we run it and get the data to come through. All right, so let's see. So at the bottom, here's where our discount subtotal and all of that's correct. Now you could do some auditing around that to make sure it's it's accurate. Uh, but this is what I really want is, is that particular uh, table within the data set. Now, what I need to do with this is I've got to take what is in that first uh, first row and make that be the new header all right and then everything else can join below it so to do that uh, we're going to go over to the developer tab and we're going to use a tool called uh, dynamic uh, replace or di yeah, dynamic rename I'm sorry not dynamic replace all right and so we're going to take um, take this first data set now there's one other thing that I want to do and, and that's add just one more filter in here. And what I want to do in that particular filter is uh, say that I only want that very first row. And so again, I'm making a little bit of assumption that that first row there uh, equals uh, item number. All right, and that's, that's the only row that I want to pull in. And then connected to the left portion of the dynamic uh, rename tool uh, I want to rename it using take field names from first row of data okay but is this this true portion will only have one row all right then what we're gonna do and, and maybe we can run this just to take a look at it real quick so you can see sort of intermittently where we are as we're, we're processing this whole thing so it makes sense what we're trying to do here once I've gotten to this true part, you'll see here's the item names, and then when I when I look at it, it's become the header at this point. Now we just need to union them and join them back together again. So we'll go to the join palette, pull in the union tool. We'll take the false portion, and the false portion contains all of the actual records without the headers. And then configuring the, the union tool, we're not going to configure by name, we're going to configure by position. So they're already in the correct positions now, I just need to uh, line them up, and we'll go ahead and run that. And it should not give me, I'm always looking for warnings, that's one of the things I'm looking for, is make sure nothing shows up yellow in here. Uh, that means it wasn't really configured properly, it's still run, it won't air out, uh, but it wasn't configured the right way. So proper number of columns they're all renamed correctly now I just have really one more thing that I have to do and that's to use the select tool to uh, change the field types here and so uh, unit price uh, we're just gonna make that uh, double 
the uh, quantity we're going to make uh, integer 16 if that size will fit and it will work here the discount we will we will leave string actually uh, we should change it but we're going to leave it string for this demo and then the uh, the line total will be double also and then I'm going to act like my browse tool is really my output to a database or to another file and then we'll go and run it and just make sure everything is is okay at the end we don't get any weird conversion or or formatting errors there's no warnings here uh, everything's good so at the end I've got a nice concise table so two years in the making I hope it was worth the wait <laughs> to get to this point but really you see how easy it is to install the PDF tool and to get the data in. The hard part is really just cleaning it out once it comes through. Uh, and once you get good at using the regex tool, you can do a lot of this work up front and start to reduce the number of tools that you need to complete the process. So I hope it was, I hope it was worth the wait. I hope you liked it. Uh, thanks for uh, being patient with me and I'll see you on the next one.